Shall we talk about the latest on blackface? Uh, yeah, Justin Trudeau losing his mind <laughs> at uh, the Eurasia Group event that he spoke at. Eurasia Group, by the way, uh, the employer of his good friend, Gerald Butts. Um, and after Gerald Butts went there, Eurasia Group got a few sole source contracts that I reported on. And um, you know, they had contracts under the previous Harper government. But um, I'm pretty sure Stephen Harper's best friend didn't work there um, when Eurasia Group was getting sole source contracts. But anyways, Justin Trudeau goes there and he goes off script, as he tends to do, and says some crazy, stupid things. Again, as he tends to do. Let's hear him. This matters because... Some of the same political forces that let that happen are now seeking to take advantage of people's economic pain. They're turning people towards anger, populism, isolationism, and protectionism. They're sharing conspiracy theories. They're sowing distrust in institutions. They offer no solutions, no alternatives, but they do effectively amplify the very real anxiety that people are feeling. It's a dangerous approach that will impact not just you in this room, but people in communities big and small right across this continent. In 2015, when we came to office, our government saw these issues. And we decided to take a different approach. One that has been centered on investing in people, in the middle class, and in people working hard to join it. One that was about creating a future where people could see opportunities for themselves, their kids, and their communities. We understood that a strong middle class made the whole economy stronger. We not only had a plan to make sure more people get their fair share of the economic pie, we created the plan to grow a bigger pie. Uh, Sheila, I, I can't... <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I thought he was going to break into a um, the Richard Harris song, uh, MacArthur Park. You know, it, it took so long to bake it. And, and, and said, but wait a second. That, the most outrageous thing he said in that rambling idiocy was when Blackface said his enemies are taking advantage of people's economic pain. This government is responsible he it. Yeah, <laughs> for the economic pain. Uh, case in point, what happened just four days ago, the carbon tax going up yet again. It, this is outrageous. Yeah, but by the way, if anybody listens to him with earbuds in, it feels like the inside of your ear is being licked by some <laughs> weirdo. Like, it's just so gross. Please, I um, scare easy. <laughs> but yeah, he's the guy who inflicted all the economic pain. And so when the conservatives try to say, we're going to offer something different than the constant economic pain that the liberals are giving you and the hikes and the carbon tax and the inflationary pressures... Uh, that's weaponizing people's economic pain. No, it's offering them an alternative and a solution, which is what you're supposed to do when you are in opposition. But he's so used to dealing with the NDP, who are the liberal lapdogs, that he's sort of put off by somebody who opposes him in a different political party. Unbelievable. And I think, do we have another video of... Um Blackface going on a uh, anti-conservative rant, I believe. That was it. Oh. That was it. Oh, okay then. I had two. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Your um, super producer Efren is right. Uh, I thought we had two videos about the conservative rant, but uh, we have something about Roxham Road, which of course is supposed to be closed uh, mm -hmm. to illegal aliens. Uh, let's see what Blackface had to say about this. You, you said in French, uh, Canada continues to be an opening, um, open and welcoming country, but that we're favoring or we favor people and privilege people who come in an, in a regular way. Uh, what do you mean by, by, by this, by favor? Oh, one of the great strengths that Canada has is that we can continue to be a place that is positive about immigration. People around this country understand uh, that welcoming people to our communities grows our economy, uh, adds depth and richness uh, to our lives, uh, and builds a stronger future for us all. 
But a big part of that is predicated on people having confidence that we have a strong immigration system, that it's rigorously applied, uh, that it actually is fair and responsible. And that's why we're continuing to move forward. We will continue to do more and more to welcome in people from around the world. But we're going to make sure that it's done in the right ways, appropriately, so people aren't putting themselves at risk uh, by trying to cross borders illegally, uh, where they're not, uh, you know, giving money to criminals to help them come to a different country, but we're taking in people in a, in a way that maximizes their chances of success. Uh, Sheila, here's what I don't get. The way the international disgrace that is Roxham Road was created was via blackface putting out that infamous tweet yeah. some six years In ago. 2017. Hashtag yeah. welcome to Canada. So now that it is closed, why doesn't blackface put out another tweet saying Roxham Road is closed. Do not waste your time coming all the way to Roxham Road because the border is not a sieve anymore. Why doesn't he say that? He put out that welcome to Canada hashtag tweet because he just wanted to, um, uh, you know, for political reasons, he wanted to humiliate uh, President Trump. But now that Roxham Road is closed, now that there's a regime change in Washington, why doesn't he say, hey, don't come anymore? But he won't, will he? No, and it's it's really some it's like an arsonist that works for the fire department, right? Like the fire and then come in and then put it out and pat yourself on the back because you're a hero. That's literally what Justin Trudeau did. He sends out this tweet in 2017, which collapses the immigration system in on itself like a dying star, causes a flood at the borders. And instead of dealing with it for six years, he did nothing. All he did was throw money at the problem, put people up in hotels, invite them in, offer them an immigration hearing years down the road. Um and bring in infrastructure to support the illegal border crossers at Roxham Road, bringing in police infrastructure and processing infrastructure instead of literally putting up a fence and sending a tweet that said, turn around, go back. This is not the way to do it. Now he claims to have fixed it and he's going to do more and more and more to fix it. He let it go on for six years and didn't do a damn thing about it. And now he wants a pat on the back for fixing the problem he created over I'm, half a decade later, this is outrageous. And, and the last year is the most outrageous part of this timeline, Sheila, because we're learning there was an agreement to fix the so-called loophole at Roxham Road, but we had to wait almost a year for Biden to get into Ottawa for the photo op uh, before yep. officially implementing it. What a disgrace. That's There's your selfie prime minister in action. There's blackface. That's the way he does business, folks. It's all about him, all about the optics. And uh, frankly, when you saw what last year was it, 40,000 uh, migrants coming into Roxham Road uh, alone, that is not a sustainable immigration policy. I'm not against immigration, but it's got to be done lawfully. You can't come up to a border, walk across the street, and have the Mounties turn into bellhops and welcome you into the nation. It doesn't work that way. And it makes a mockery of all those immigrants that are legally immigrating to Canada. They're getting in line. They're paying thousands and thousands of dollars in immigration lawyer fees. They're, turns out they're suckers. All you had to do was go to Plattsburgh, New York, and welcome to Canada. Well, and uh, what I like was uh, when Lincoln went and he was he went up to Roxham Road and he tried to cross the border as a Canadian citizen. And they're like, no, actually, you have you have to go to the land border crossing, the legal land border crossing. <laughs> these these people get to come in here. Um, but I also know through order paper questions and access to information that while Justin Trudeau claims now that he's against human trafficking and people paying uh others to traffic them to the border. I also know that they've had zero communication with New York State about dealing with this issue. They've had zero communications with uh, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, who is what they call re-ticketing, just buying tickets to get the migrants out of his city, even though he's a sanctuary city and invited them there. Um, 
He's buying them tickets to send them up to Roxham Road. They've had zero communications with the Americans on that issue and on the human trafficking in upstate New York. So Justin Trudeau can say whatever he wants in a grocery store for some reason. Why does he have so many press conferences in a grocery store, by the way? It seems to be his favorite backdrop. But he can say whatever he wants in those press conferences. We know what they're saying behind the scenes, and it is literally nothing. And, and Sheila... I always say the so-called loophole because the loophole was really never there under the safe no, third party put agreement. Put a fence up. Yeah. Once a, a refugee claimant steps on U.S. soil, that's the end of the race. It, you know, yep. that is a safe country. Even with Donald Trump in power, I've got news to say. So we never had to accept uh, these illegal aliens in the first place. We could have just built a fence and say, go away because you are already in a safe third party country, that being the United States of America. What a disgrace. Like, look at all the infrastructure they brought in yep. here when you could have just put up a fence. Yep. Like you could literally could have just put up a fence. They brought in all this additional policing infrastructure. And I forget how many millions of dollars it was. It was in an order paper response from a while ago. But all they had to do was put up a fence. Like just put up a little fence, but they didn't even do that. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion, and it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.